Welcome and thank you to everyone for your participation today. I'm very honored to welcome you today within my capacity as B20 Digitalization Task Force Deputy Chair. This year, the B20 Indonesia focuses our effort on specific key objectives such as embracing collaborative growth, boosting innovative global economy, and forging an inclusive and sustainable future. As the Digitalization Task Force, we reflect these broader goals, especially on innovative economy and inclusiveness, by addressing the growing digital divide. Digital divide here refers to the gap of the growth between those enjoying inclusion in the digital economy and ecosystems and those who fall outside of the digital realm. However, we realize that to achieve inclusive digital growth, there are key fundamental issues to tackle. One of the key issues is helping MSMEs to transform digitally. The fact is, the progress gap between large companies and MSMEs digital transformation is significant and the impact of the pandemic highlighted the dire need for more MSMEs to digitalize. For instance, in Indonesia, a country where the majority of businesses are MSMEs, only 25% of them are digitalized. We want to play our part in driving the digital transformation of MSMEs. Therefore, we are proud to present our joint research with our knowledge partner, the Boston Consulting Group, titled Powering Up a Post-Pandemic Rebound for MSMEs Through Digital Transformation. In this report, we talk about several key points. First, we explore how important MSMEs are to the global and Indonesia's economy. Then, we highlight the challenges MSMEs face during COVID-19 pandemic and how digitalization can help MSMEs survive it. Finally, we give six detailed recommendations of MSMEs' path to digital transformation, including three key pillars that must be strategically delivered and three key enablers that provide foundational support for MSMEs' digitalization journey. It is certainly my wish that this report will be useful for all MSMEs, not only Indonesia, but also globally. Hope you enjoy the discussion to come. Welcome everyone to the B20 G20 Dialogue Micro Small Medium Enterprises Reports 2022 powering up a post-pandemic rebound for MSMEs through digital transformation. I'm Caroline Saramad from C Today and I'll be your host for today's B20 Dialogue. And again, for your information, this dialogue comply with the health protocols and COVID-19's regulations. Our guests and crew have been fully vaccinated for COVID-19. Now, coming again to the matter where the importance of micro, small, medium enterprises is particularly pronounced in developing nations of Southeast Asia. The COVID-19 pandemic triggered significant disruption across the global economy, with firms of all sizes and sector operation affected by the widespread impacts. Digital transformation provides an important platform to support and uplift opportunities for MSMEs during this challenging period. Telcom Group, as the largest telecommunication company in Indonesia, is taking part in developing new technology, information, and digitalization. The country with us today, we have Fajrin Rashid or Bapak Fajrin Rashid as B20 Digitalization Task Force Deputy Chair, and also joining our table today, Mr. David Chin or Bapak David Chin, Managing Director and Partner at Boston Consulting Group. Thank you very much, Bapak Fajrin. Thank you very much, Bapak David. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, we're very delighted to have your attendance today. Again, uh, this is going to be in a very important dialogue and also discussion as we're giving you or we're going to cater to our audience on the reports of MSMEs 2022 with powering up a post-pandemic rebound for MSMEs through digital transformation. So let us start uh, by sharing to our audience and also viewers, uh, Pai David and also Papa Jin, 
What, and what is the initiative and the motivation for this report itself? What really inspires you to write uh, this report to enable MSMEs through digital transformation? Yes, thank you, Ati, uh, for the question. I think when we were writing this report, we were inspired essentially by two key reasons. Right? The first one is the theme itself is very much in line with the theme of the B20 Digitalization Trust Force. Yes. We try to bridge the digital divide to create an inclusive growth. Right? And this is a topic that is very strategic yes. and also very timely and more importantly, very dear to our own purpose. Yeah. Secondly, I think we recognize the importance of MSME in Indonesia as well as in the world. It comprises of very big proportion of our economy. It also employs a large majority of population, especially yes. in emerging countries. So I think those are the two primary reasons. And we believe uh, through the creation of this report, we hope we can lay the ground so we can actually speed up and accelerate the digitalization of MSME in the Indonesia, but also broadly, globally. Yeah. Right. And Pak Fajin, coming back to you, as you already mentioned in the prologue, how our MSMEs play a major role right here for especially in becoming the pillar of Indonesian economy. How is the importance and the significance of MSMEs right here for Indonesia, Papa? So again, MSMEs play a very significant role. Mm -hmm. It plays a key pillar actually to our national economy. Yeah. It accounts for about 99% so almost all of the businesses in Indonesia. Right. It also employs about 60% of all GDP. So again, really significant portion. It also employs over 117 million people mm -hmm. in 2018 around that. So maybe now already more. So these enterprises are significant local employers and also providing a lot of opportunities to uh, people in terms of the job creation. Yes. And clearly have a stated commitments to empower the local economy. All right, so of course now we know how the importance is. We know that uh, for the past almost two and a half years, Bapak David and also Bapak Fajin, yeah. when COVID uh, impacted globally across the world, it impacted every sector, whether it's the governments or ministerial or industri industrial players, including MSMEs. How deeply impacted our MSMEs because of COVID-19 pandemic? I think the short answer to that is very deeply. Yeah. I think on average, MSME around the world, they were impacted quite severely yeah. uh, through the pandemic of uh, COVID-19. And one of the reasons is also uh, a lot of, of these small businesses, uh, they were not equipped to actually do the business in remote fashion. Right? Mm -hmm. Some of the bigger companies, they were more ready with the right tools, etc. But some of these uh, MSMEs, they were not ready at that time. Yeah. So and through the research that was undertaken by uh, the World Bank of Future Business, we actually learned that 40 to 70 percent of the MSMEs actually experienced a significant decline in revenue in 2020. Yeah. And a study that BCG also conducted specifically for Indonesia, we take note about 80 percent of the MSME in Indonesia experienced a revenue decline. I think that is something that is very significant. 80 percent is a very big number. Yeah. And especially we see in some sectors like in the hospitality sector, in the uh, accommodation, uh, hotels, we see a lot of MSME faces uh, significant challenges. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hence, that's where uh, we do understand that uh, MSMEs plays a major role, especially in the Indonesian economy. So how do we power up and powering the post-pandemic rebound for MSMEs through digital transformation? We'll be right back after this break, so don't go anywhere. Stay tuned right here on C Today. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone to the B20 Dialogue MSMEs Report 2022, powering up a post-pandemic rebound for MSMEs through digital transformation. Now earlier, on our before the break, we discussed on the importance of MSMEs in Indonesia and the challenges they are facing due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now in Indonesia itself, MSMEs form a key pillar of the national economy, accounting for 99% of the businesses. In terms of sectors, MSMEs are significantly overrepresented in the most exposed sectors to the pandemic impacts. We're still right here, joined by Bapak Fajid Rashid, B20 Digitalization Task Force Deputy Chair, 
and also Bapak David Chin, Managing Director and Partner at Boston Consulting Group, to discuss on digitalization as a solution for MSMEs to survive and thrive post-COVID-19. So before our break, Pa David was actually just mentioning what uh, impacted the MSMEs because of the pandemic. Now, again, Pa Fajin and also Bapak David, uh, everything, every challenge just has a silver lining. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, even with the pandemic, it become the end game of the conventional way for MSMEs. And then for them to strive forward now going digital. With that said, uh, you know, welcoming the, uh, the horizon, that digitalization, we all agree that the step forward for MSMEs is to focus on recovery from the impact of the pandemic. And this report, digitalization, offers a promising pathway towards the recovery goal. So what benefits will MSMEs if they go digital? So I think it is true that digital transformation provides an important platform to support and also mm -hmm. to uplift opportunities for MSMEs, especially during this challenging period. Digital transformation, in my mind, offers benefits at least in the two sectors. So one, it actually opens up new opportunities in terms of the new market, new business for MSMEs. And the second, it also provides pathway to a more efficient operation and also in terms of the cost saving. So digital, inter digital technologies can provide invaluable tools to ensure that, for example, in terms of the providing a new market, yes. now through digitalization, MSMEs can actually sell their products, not just locally in their environment, but also regionally, and globally, yeah. and even globally. Correct. And the second related with the efficiency or a uh, pathway to enhance in operational costs, mm -hmm. through digitalization, we can also see actually the impact of technology in terms of driving efficiency through automation and then more efficient IT tools. So it actually saves their costs. So these one regarded with the new revenue and then the second related with the cost saving yeah. is actually what uh, digital transformation actually offers to MSMEs. Right. Uh, what's your uh, take on this also, Pak David? Yeah, I think I fully agree with what <coughs> Mas Fajrin said, right? I think digital transformation truly bring a lot of benefit to the yeah. MSMEs. Right? And in fact, I think recent analysis that BCG helped to conduct in Indonesia reveals that there is a big multiplier effect from helping the SMEs in Indonesia to go through the digitalization journey. I think the multiplier effect if it's around 1.1 times. Yes. And we also observe uh, another important um, uh, trends, right? That the digital SMEs are actually about two times more likely to sell goods nationally compared to the MSMEs who actually do the business, you know, in the conventional way, yes. right? They tend to only right. sell in their respective yes. uh, areas. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, you know, like uh, if we look at in terms of like the global or international expansion, the SMEs that are actually digital, they are more likely to sell goods internationally up to 4.6 times more mm -hmm. compared to the non-digital SMEs. Right? So I think clearly digital actually provides an avenue for the MSME to really grow beyond their own territory. Right. So they can actually become not only a local champion, but they can become national and even better can actually grow international. And the pandemic really startled everything because before that there was no, I mean, people are probably are still very preoccupied with the way, the conventional way. But because right. of COVID, yeah. uh, the only way we go is being online yeah. and, you know, yeah. with uh, digitalized and whatnot. So this is their pathway towards uh, to go there. Fully agree. Yeah. Some of them, I think, were being forced as well, right? I mean, when yeah. you are running out of option, what else? You tend to yes. actually think through about what will be the alternative to grow, right? Yeah. Yes. And just adding to that, Bapak David, and also yeah. uh, Bapak Fajrin, uh, in regards to this factor, I do have a highlight where uh, President yeah. Joko Widodo addresses for the opening of the National Coordination Meeting for Digital Transformation and Complete Data Collection of Cooperatives and MSMEs uh, that was on March. And he stated that, uh, you know, I quote him, a minimum of 20 million MSMEs will get on board with e-commerce e in 2022, increase 24 million in 2023 and 30 million in 2024. And that our target, he added that during the COVID-19 pandemic, some 17.5 million MSMEs has joined the digital ecosystem in Indonesia. Uh, you know, how, how, how great are we seeing these numbers and also the facts of data itself, Pak Fajrin? Yeah, so I think that's true. The pandemic actually really drives the digital transformation Yeah. because it actually limits the presence in our offline, right? Mm -hmm. But then uh, the presence in online is actually being more exposed. So if the MSMEs can actually leverage the digital transformation, they can actually get the important 
a sector uh, open up for them. Yes. Right. So this is actually a new thing that uh, is not easy for some of the MSMEs because yes. they need to learn some of these uh, areas, right? In terms of the internet marketing, in terms yeah. of the uh, how to manage the order in online and so on. But it actually brings up a lot of opportunities yes. for them. Now, talking about that, Bapak Fadil and Bapak Dev, it's the education, yeah, yes. especially educating those MSMEs that live in rural or suburb areas. We already, you've already mentioned the benefits of going digital. So what are some of the barriers that made these MSMEs reluctant to join, uh, to join the band? So again, it's not easy, right? Yes. So uh, we need to learn about uh, some of these uh, elements, right? Including how to sell in online, etc. Correct. So we need uh, to actually train them, train some of these MSMEs. It's actually homework for everyone, uh, right. from the government, from the big businesses, and also individual, to also provide this opportunity for them. Yeah. What about uh, yeah. from you, Pak David? Yeah, I think um, it's it's very clear that those who can adopt digital actually prosper better than those who are not, right? Mm -hmm. But we still see why uh, still a, a significant proportion of the MSMEs have not actually been uh, starting this uh, digitalization journey, right? And yes. I think based on the survey that we did uh, in Indonesia, for example, we see some key barriers, yeah? I think uh, there are at least four key categories, mm -hmm. right? One is around the funding. They sometimes need actually funding support. Second is in terms of human capital. This is actually what you yes. alluded earlier, right? And how, how actually people actually need to learn on how to use digital for product development, for like better marketing, for better sales and go to market, right? The third one is around the government and regulatory framework. And the last one is actually um, some kind of like technical as well as business implementation challenges where they may need some help in terms of mentoring as well as uh, advisory or consulting help. So, uh, and then if we rank order it based on the <coughs> based on the survey that we did, we see the number one barrier is actually funding support. 57% of the MSME actually cited that as one of the key barrier, right? And then followed by digital training and learning centers, 49% right. of the MSME cited that. The third one is uh, regulatory support, 43%. Mm -hmm. And the last one is actually the mentoring services, about 32%. And connectivity infrastructure, 26%. Yes. I think those are essentially the key barriers. Yeah, I think if we can work together to provide solution to these barriers, and I'm sure the acceleration will be even much faster pace. Yeah. Right, with the synchronization between the MSMEs and all the, uh, the, the factors that are the key barriers right now right. working together. Now, now we know that, uh, you know, the transfer, the potential is there. Now, being uh, the potential of digital uh, growth or transformation being in the growth for the MSMEs is there. Uh, what's the next step now? What's the, what's the process? Again, we're going to talk about that. Uh, we do have some key pillars that you would like yeah. to announce after this. Well, before that, we're going to make, uh, we're going to have another break. Excuse me. We'll be right back on B20 Dialogue, where MSMEs reports 2022 powering up a post-pandemic rebound for MSMEs through digital transformation with drivers and enablers for MSMEs to overcome barriers, as was mentioned before, and digitally transform. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the B20 Dialogue MSMEs Report 2022, powering up a post-pandemic rebound for MSMEs through digital transformation. Earlier, we had discussed on the importance of MSMEs in Indonesia and the challenges they are facing due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, digital technologies can provide invaluable tools to ensure business continuity while accessing new and emerging markets nationally, regionally, and also globally. However, digital transformation is not without its challenges for MSMEs who face several key barriers, both financial and non-financial. And we're still right here, joined by Bapak Fajr Rashid, B20 Digitalization Task Force Deputy Chair 
and also Bapak David Chin, Managing Director and Partner at Boston Consulting Group, to discuss on digitalization as a solution for MSMEs to survive and thrive post-COVID-19. Now, before uh, we had our break, Pai Davids was actually mentioning some of the key barriers that's very influential and why uh, these MSMEs are very reluctant to join you know, or go digitals. Uh, but, but before that, again, we know that for the past two and a half years itself, we've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of programs. Uh, mine that's from the government or ministerial or maybe from uh, business players, companies for their CSR, for these MSMEs to be ready once we're out of the pandemic, how do you think the program's gone so far? Yeah. I think it's a good program because I believe that to actually train and educate these MSMEs, it is good if we can collaborate each other. Yeah. So from the government, from the private sectors, from the NGO, they both have each of their own point of view. Yes. Right. So for example, the government can obviously guide MSMEs regarding whatever uh, regulation, regulation needed by the MSMEs. Mm -hmm. We can provide some inputs regarding how we do business, on how to manage financials, etc. So those are actually needed by the MSMEs. So as many programs as possible, I think it will actually accelerate the number of MSMEs that will go online by 2024 as mentioned by the government. Right. Now, Papajan, uh, let's talk to you also, Padaf. It's if we're seeing now to the ground, on the location, uh, what does the MSMEs really need to work uh, out now? Uh, for them to transfer the digital transformation? I think as, um, as what we have seen, right? I think uh, most of the SMEs in Indonesia at the moment, what they really need is actually, as what Pa Fajrin said, is actually it's almost like a mentoring, I guess. Mm -hmm. Someone who can actually teach them as well as show them the way. This is actually how you can actually do the business digitally, yeah. And some people actually, uh, especially the younger generation of MSMEs, I think their ability to adapt and actually transform and adopt digital way, maybe it's easier, and right? Faster. But we also need to think about how about those who are have been who are maybe in their 50s, in the 60s, yes. right? And how can we can actually help right. them also on this uh, journey, right? So I think. Uh, that is some of the homework that I think we still can work together. I think the government itself has provided a lot of programs across different ministries. Uh, maybe we can actually do a better coordination around it so we can yes. actually tailor and concentrate the efforts to go after the four or five key barriers that we mentioned earlier. Right. Now, we're going to start about uh, or begin to ask you where MSMEs can start their digital transformation journey. Where does it begin then, Bob? Mm. So I think uh, I like the word journey because I believe it's actually a never-ending journey. Mm -hmm. Some MSMEs are already quite advanced in terms of how they leverage the digital transformation, but some are probably quite behind. But it doesn't mean that the advanced one can stop learning because digital and technology are changing really, really fast, right? In the past, for example, we used website. Now we use mobile. Now probably we use uh, social media or live streaming when we mm -hmm. want to sell or offer our products to the customers. So again, this journey is something that the MSMEs and also everyone need to keep continuing on. Now, regarding the MSMEs itself, there are a lot of uh, challenges, but I believe that there are three important pillars that they should focus on. Okay. So one is regarding the product itself, so what do they sell? Mm -hmm. And the second is regarding the uh, operation, so how they can actually improve their operation better through this online. And the third is about go-to-market, so how they sell the products. And these are how I think uh, the, 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 the framework needs to be learned by the MSMEs. It also needs to be enabled by, I believe, a uh, few pillars mm -hmm. that the MSMEs also need help. So these three pillars are uh, one is regarding the funding, so yes. how the MSMEs can actually also get funding from government or other uh, private sectors yes. to help them capitalize or accelerate their business. Mm -hmm. Second is about the talent, so how can actually MSMEs learn the skills needed to explore these areas. So, and the third is about uh, the final enablers, is about 
the government regulation or regulatory needed, uh, support needed from the government to actually embark on this journey. I think Pak Fajr and also Pak David, I think this is the right or perfect time if we can go, we step back. Yeah. Let's talk about the key pillars itself or the strategic pillars. You were saying products, operations and go to market. Let's say there is a case, this is a person that has a business, uh, a, home, a home product. So how can they prepare the product first? How can they sell the product? How can they understand the product more? Papa Jin and Papa David, we think uh, we want to know uh, this okay, from what you Sure, sure. I think <clears throat> with the advancement of digital technology, I think w what is very good is actually sometimes you can even test what is the market appetite before mm -hmm. you create the product. Right? You can almost create like sometimes a mock-up product and actually put an advertisement just for like 100 or 1,000 uh, people in Facebook and actually you see which one that actually customer will click more. Right? Okay. So based on that, then you can actually design your product. Right? So it's not like in the past where you actually prepare the, the product and you hope that actually the market actually yeah. takes it. Now actually you can do the test and the test can be done in relatively a lot more affordable than in the past, yeah. Right. The advancement of technology. And it's good to have you. That's why have you have Pak Fajr and Pak David. Let's say about Fajr, right now people are always like galoring of coffees, right? So you think someone from Kalimantan would think like, I know I have a very special coffee. Hmm. Why should I product this coffee and it can be better than, than those the one in the capital city, let's say? So I think digital, one of the things that digital provides is actually data. Yes. Right? So if I were just like uh, you mentioned, I want to sell coffee, I can try to sell as many uh, coffee as possible, mm -hmm. uh, different varieties of coffee, a different taste, different combination, right. and see which one has uh, best feedback from the customers, right? Yes. So let's say this coffee uh, rating 4.7 out of 5, this one 4.2, this one is 4.9. Yes. I will probably then focus on the 4.91, on, uh, on developing similar on that. products like yes. that. So, so this is... Uh, a simple way of how we actually use data analytics yes. through customer review, customer feedbacks mm -hmm. in terms of how we can actually keep improving our products. And yeah, that's like to the go-to market, right? Uh, which market that really relies on your product. What about the operation itself? Let's dissect on that. What do you mean by the operations? So I think operation is uh, simply how you manage your business. Before, yes. before digital, before technology, you manage everything manually, right? Uh, you probably use uh, a notebook to record your sales, yeah. you uh, accept the payment by cash, etc. Now, now with the use of digital technology, there are a lot of uh, tools to help you uh, improve that. Yeah. One, we can use POS system, right? So we can accept not just cash payment, but also credit uh, card and recently also QR, right? Uh, people can just QR, uh, scan QR at your uh, store and then uh, they can pay you. Yeah. And then uh, the same thing uh, or the connected tool with the post is actually can also use to record your expenses and also your revenue. So now you can have more and better visibility regarding your business. So you can know uh, how to improve your financial uh, in terms of the business. And the efficiency also. Now, when a and MSME is already following these key pillars or strategic pillars, uh, how would this added more value to you know, their businesses? So I think uh, one is, as you mentioned just now, uh, regarding the efficiency. Mm -hmm. uh, they can know which areas can actually bring them a lot of uh, cost, for example, and whether it's possible to decrease that cost. For example, maybe we can find, maybe the MSMEs can find a cheaper sourcing uh, or suppliers, right? Uh, so they can uh, decrease the cost. And also similarly for the revenue, which revenue, which products actually give them the highest margin. So maybe they can focus on that and then uh, and then skip the product with the low margin. So that's how you can actually use the IT or digitalization to make your business more efficient and at the same time also increase your revenue. Right. Now, we've already talked about the um, key pillars or strategic pillars. Now we're going to turn to Padafits on yeah. regards on the key enablers. Yep. And as mentioned about Fajin before, digital talent, access to financing and government support. Now, what condition must be achieved to enable digital transformation for MSMEs then, Padafits? Yeah. yeah, I think there are at least three main key enablers for successful MSME digital transformation the first one is actually on the digital talent I think we understand that digital literacy continue to be what I believe as the first step to for any businesses to achieve a successful digital transformation so addressing the skill gap I think in Indonesia you know I think Pak Fajin already mentioned 99% of mm -hmm. uh, the businesses in Indonesia are MSME but the, what is 
actually maybe lesser known is 90% of them are actually micro, right? So meaning you only have like one or two persons businesses, right? They are not like even a 10 or 20 people businesses, right? So I think making sure how do we make sure that these super, super small micro businesses can actually learn, actually understand. So hopefully over time they can upgrade, right? They can become a small businesses. From small businesses, hopefully they can become right. a uh, enterprises. I think that's what we need to address on the first enablers, right? I think the, the second enabler is around the funding. I think the funding we already talked a lot. I think there are a lot of government concern about them also, right? I think you, yes. you have seen the creation of the ultra uh, micro holding, right? Uh, that is spearheaded by BRI, right? Uh, one of the large BUMN in Indonesia. That's another example on how we can actually provide more funding. But beyond what the government and state owned companies are doing, we also see proliferation of like the private players mm -hmm. trying to actually provide quote and quote financial services solution to the previously unbankable population. Yeah, I think that's also another thing that we see in other countries can actually unlock quite a lot of potential. Right? And of course, the third one, of course, is on the regulation, regulatory uh, framework on how do we make sure that, uh, for example, yes, sometimes we need certain standard, right? But then the question is, do we need to apply the very high requirements of, let's say, cybersecurity requirements mm -hmm. to the small businesses who go into digital, right? Yeah. So I think, how, how do you, how do you, the average, I guess, our regulation to make sure that at the same time, it protects everyone, but also give the opportunity to the smaller ones to actually be able to do the digital without a lot of investment. Yeah, yeah I mean, again, if you were talking about funding itself, uh, David, I think that's one of the uh, key, especially for the MSMEs mm -hmm. and whatnot. Um, how do you foresee them, uh, again, within these challenges and whatnot? We are overcoming now from pandemic to, you know, hopefully an endemic stage one, you know, very soon yeah. itself. How do you foresee them going, you know, a step forward or, you know, encouraging them to go forward with the enablers that you've already mentioned before? Like, again, let's talk about digital literacy. That is something that I think really is the most important one for them. Uh, are they also very opening up to the situation now? I think uh, what I observe is there are more and more um, right. actually businesses who actually want to propel themselves ahead of what they use uh, to be able to achieve. I yeah. think that's, that's a very good encouragement. And you also started seeing like a lot of digital platforms also quote and quote allow the learning can be actually be done faster remotely. Yes. So a high quality teacher, for example, right? Or high quality instructor or mentor, right? They don't necessarily now need to travel to remote villages and traveling for like 12 hours to, to coach people there, right? You now, can do it online with the advancement of internet yeah. right? and then at the moment now I think 140, 150 million people in Indonesia already have access to internet mm -hmm. right? and that is providing a very good base yeah? that people can learn from high quality program, high quality instructor from anywhere. Right? So the only thing that is stopping them is only their, their own willingness, right? Yes. If they are willing to learn, they can learn it now. Yeah, it's much easier than in the past. Yeah, yeah. and we're already seeing the uh, the involvement, especially for those people that is living in villages and whatnot. We're also seeing how the international market is looking up to all these rural areas and you know suburbians and whatnot. Pafajin, how do, what's your intake in that? Where people are now coming in back again to our you know to our country, and then they're actually the one that's kind of like supporting our MSMEs for them to grow. I think it's uh, good for the country overall. Uh, I do hope that the learnings that they bring from the outside, uh, from yes. the foreign countries, are not just implemented directly without seeing what uh, happens on the ground, right? Because maybe there are a lot of things that needs to be tailored also and catered to the local market. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, if we see e-commerce or uh, other uh, digital platforms in Indonesia, sometimes they are actually catered to Indonesians because uh, for example, e-commerce in the U.S., maybe majority of the payment is used uh, is using credit card. But in Indonesia, a lot of payments are using cash, uh, bank transfer, and recently uh, wallet through the, uh, through the through the QR, right? 
So that's how you actually cater the solution, the digital solution to the local market. Yeah, and kind of, uh, it's really quite um, uh, quite a challenge if you want to change the climate itself, where people are usually going, you know, paying by cash now, and they have to be cashless and whatnot. They have to again uh, understand the program and whatnot, and especially the regulation. But if we're talking about MSMEs and you know, in, in small areas or in villages where they usually, you know, they have they they know the value of their product. And then now if they, wouldn't, they want to put it in commerce, then there's regulations or tax and whatnot. Something that maybe they're not familiar or they don't want to, like they're usually having that 100%. Now I have to, you know, have to undergo these regulations and whatnot. How do we, uh, you know, kind of like shift them that this is the right or correct way? Yeah, I think, again, education plays an important role, right? So, for example, by uh, actually paying tax uh, once you go bigger, yeah. It's actually good for everyone, right? Um, you want to stay small, then maybe you can uh, not pay tax, but uh, you're still small. But uh, if you keep uh, getting bigger, uh, you need to pay tax, but then you also get a lot of support from the government, right? Yeah. Regarding the license, etc. So it's actually win-win for everyone. But again, this is something that needs to be educated to them as well. I know, and it's very promising also when Pfizer and also Pfizer, if it's saying then there's a lot of MSMEs that are in the younger generation, because yeah. we know this is this is actually their well and they're ready for it also. Now, but if it also, um, you know, with this report itself powering up a post-pandemic rebound for MSMEs through digital transformation, uh, this this report is really important for MSMEs in Indonesia and globally. Why? Why would this very be important? Yeah, I think because the, the report itself not only identify what is the current situation, but yes. they also give some practical use cases, eh? practical tips along the key pillars. I think that's something that is important. So people hopefully can really look at the report and compare that to the business that they are currently doing, whether there are certain areas that they have not done. Right? So yes. I think it's a practical enough, hopefully, and something that is easy enough to understand, right? So, for example, like what Pa Fajrin say about product development, right? Now, with the advancement of data, how you can actually develop a better product that the customer wants, right? On operations, how do you simplify from like a manual bookkeeping into like a digitalized bookkeeping, right? So, those examples are simple enough, I think, for businesses to understand and hopefully they can begin to adopt, right? Yeah. This would be like a playbook for them, right. uh, for you just to follow uh, the regulation through. What about you, Fawah Hajri? Um, yeah, so I think this report is useful uh, first for MSMEs, right? So they can understand what pillars are important in their digital transformation journey, yes. but also to parties related with MSMEs, mm. right? So for example, in go-to-market, so because uh, now we see that actually go-to-market is one of the important pillars, then maybe companies can start to uh, serve the MSME's product related with that, right? So, for example, Telkom Indonesia recently developed Padi UMKM, yes. where we actually connect MSME's with the SOEs as a marketplace, right? So that's that's one. The second is also for the policymakers or the governments, right? Mm -hmm. So regarding enablers, uh, for example, digital talent, financing, and government uh, regulation uh, needed. So those are clearly policymakers area. So what kind of uh, regulation needed, what kind of uh, support needed in financing and talent. So that's something that can also be uh, looked at by the government in order when they are creating their uh, policy next year or the next the year after. Right. And how promising is our MSMEs, especially now we're, we're coming in very near to the climax of the G20 summit itself. Uh, by David and also Papa Jin, I would like to have your take on that. How fruitful is our MSMEs, especially becoming the pillar of Indonesian economy? Papa Jin, first of all. So, I think one of the theme in the G20 and also B20 this year is actually regarding the inclusive growth, right? The inclusive economy, meaning that if we want to grow, we need to grow together. Yes. And this obviously also includes the MSMEs, not just big businesses. If you want to grow the economy of Indonesia and also the world, we need to grow the MSMEs. Again, in Indonesia, for example, MSMEs represent 60% of the GDP. So if we don't grow the MSMEs, then the impact of the economy will be uh, not as far, not as fast as we want. Right. right? So uh, it's actually uh, a homework for everyone, not just in Indonesia, but also the world. Yes. Your take on this, by David? Yeah, I think I fully agree. I think for the developing economies, especially part of the B20, I think uh, MSME is not an option, yeah. I think it's a must that they actually need to carry on actually on this digital transformation because they employ majority of the population in our country. Yes. They also like account for the biggest part of the economy. So if they don't move, that means the country as a whole is not moving. Right? 
So it's not an option, but in my view, it's a must that they actually have to carry on on this. And all the stakeholders, including the government, the big companies, the uh, academic institution, they all need to work together to help facilitate and make the transformation journey slightly easier for these people. Right. right. So the MSMEs are ready. Uh, you know, the climate is already changing, but reports and the playbook is already yeah. here. Well, to you, thank you very much, Papajin, and also Pada Fitz. It has been a very insightful session right here. Certainly looking forward to reading the full report on this. And as well, uh, we'd like to close this discussion. We would like to ask you what will be happening next for the B20 from Indonesia. Um, so yeah, so from the B20, especially B20 Digitalization Task Force, we have finished the policy making, we have uh, created an actionable set of policy recommendations, and we also have mentioned or proposed that to the government or G20 leaders, right? So we have the B20 and G20 Summit one or two months ago, and we have some other initiatives uh, between B20 and G20. So next, we will continue advocating this policy recommendation through side events and also reports like this MSMEs all the way up into the eventual B20 Summit, uh, which will be held in Bali Correct. on around 13 to 14 November. So we'd like to welcome everyone on that event. And obviously, if you want to know more about the B20 or B20 Digitalization Task Force, just look at the B20 website. Thank All you. Right. Thank you very much to Bapa Fajrin, our B20 Digitalization Task Force Deputy Chair, and also here with attendance, Bapa David Chin as Managing Director and Partner at Boston Consulting Group for your time and sharing with us on the digitalization and also FMMSM means and how to survive post-pandemic, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. And again, uh, we hope that this would be a pathway for local MSMEs implementing their role to become the significant pillar of the revival of Indonesian economy. And again, looking forward for a fruitful future. Once again, thank you very much, Papa Jirin, and also Pa Davids. And I'm Caroline Sarahma. Thank you so much for being here with us. And we hope you have a healthy and prosperous days and years forward. Thank you very much. And we'll, be, and we'll again join you very soon. Thank you.